All right, slept back. My friend's property last night. The orchard. Letting them eat their way out towards the road. As you can see, the green starts just right back there. Leaving back my friend's property. Headed out, we're gonna go check a, a fig tree that we haven't, uh, it's in an alleyway. Hangs out over the tree, over the uh, fence, and we haven't checked that uh, all year. So hopefully we're not too late, and it ha hasn't started dropping yet. I know there'll still be figs on it, but uh, hopefully they're, hopefully they're all still on it. Because it's an alley that no one ever goes down and picks any of this stuff. There's actually hazelnuts, there's plums, there's grapes, there's all kinds of stuff down that alleyway. And yeah, there's an apple tree. First stuff that I pick up is the stuff that's on the ground is always the ripest and the sweetest. As long as it doesn't have ants on it, it's they're the best. side of the road and there's like a curb or something where uh, my ram really can't he's not allowed to, uh, to graze most of the time uh, when when they're all hooked in like this he's usually um, he's usually just walking and then we'll stop uh, and I'll pet him to give him some kind of a uh, incentive uh, for not being so bummed that he doesn't get to graze with the, the two ewes in the front are able to graze because I, I Un I am unfurl their leash and let them uh, have full full reign of their leash's uh, diameter. And the one in the back has uh, that leash has been busted so many times. It only has like ten foot of maybe even eight foot of um, slack uh, when it's released. And then this one up front has like twenty foot or something ridiculously long. And she's my milker. The one the one up front. The one that you have in milk or else the one that needs it the most is the, is the least healthy um, you put that one up front so that it's it's the most convenient for you to reach down and, and unlock her leash and let her go graze something if you're walking by because if it's not if it's not uh, easy enough to do in this lifestyle then you're, in any lifestyle then uh, you're so much more less likely to it and so um, yeah you want to make your uh, want to make it most convenient to uh, unleash your, uh, your front your front you who's in milk so that she can be uh, have access to the most grace and be the most satiated and therefore make the most milk um, I think in the future that would be uh, a lot more efficient a little one stage more efficient which is everything um, if uh, when I'm walking my ram and I'm he's on my right hand side I don't have to reach over him and reach down and un, undo that uh, my used leash if if I got my friend uh, who welded my wagon together if I got him to weld a bolt uh, on top of um, my rams yoke the metal metal hoop that goes over his yoke then I could simply just put one of these uh, one of these loops string loops over it and it would, uh, the leash would be right there on his back and I'd just be like, click. I wouldn't even have to bend down or lean over or nothing. I could just unclick it, let her go graze, and when she's done, she comes back and I click it and then we walk. And just that little step can be enough for you to, to do it more readily. She's pissed because she only has, she doesn't even have an extendable leash back there. Um, happy. Like four 
foot of slack back there. And she's the most complainy complainerton out of all my sheep. Definitely the most verbal. Definitely the most spoiled. She's a bottle baby. Don't bottle raise your sheep. This, yeah, it makes them more social to begin with, but then it makes them like so much more demanding. And I've actually found that in the long run, they uh, they end up treating you kind of like how a teenager treats its parents when yeah when they get to that age they start to like I don't need you type attitude um, so they're like yeah bottle babies are like super social uh, up front but then they end up uh, drifting away from you um, socially um, up until their first pregnancy as soon as they, they have their first pregnancy that bottle baby standoffishness um, that teenage standoffishness um, starts to uh, come back around and they start to um, want to uh, be more obedient and socialize with you more. They start respecting their parent more is, is essentially what I'm uh, equating to, uh, which I imagine is uh, the experience that parents have um, with their teenagers once their teenagers um, have their first child, um, then they're like, more understanding of where their parents are at and so they, they rebond start to rebond with their parents um, yeah, I do not advise bottle babies though anymore um, I think that the, the best the best behaved sheep are the ones that um, you um, basically rescue from a farm I mean my sheep are ten times uh, uh, happier and like Rosie I, I traded her um, uh, from a farm this ram I traded him from he's by far like the most obviously appreciative because he was just left out in a field by himself and I think he was beat too because like every time I approach him he acts like I'm gonna hit him and um, that's some people's tactic is to is to beat them so that they think that, that the ram will never um, will never try to contend with them and try to become violent which sometimes is the case and in his case I think it was the case uh, but most times, uh, they have such a high threshold for pain that it just makes them that much more violent if you introduce violence to them. But he is so grateful to be with us. He's so much happier and more fulfilled of a, of a character now. He was like, he was like a dumb pasture animal when I got him. He just was not, didn't have, didn't have any connection with it, with anything. Didn't have any started to develop his character the last couple months Rosie was a rescue she came from a feed lot or a, somewhat a feed lot they had some gra uh, grass grazing but it was up in the high desert so uh, she is ecstatic to have all the stuff that we walk across and you get the dock that's the dock right there some curly dock that vine they were getting right back there was uh a mixture of morning glory and pine mat manzanita. Got some pear, pear tree sprouts. Got some more of that pine mat manzanita. I love that stuff. So good. And now what is this? Well, this is this is. Alphalaria, right here. It's also called stork's bill. Some people call it stork's bill because it's got little things, pointy things that I guess people think look like a stork. Um, this is, um, this is, I think this is yarrow. I can't tell at this stage, but I think it's yarrow. Got some amaranth right there. Got some chufa right there. Chufa. It's like got a triangular stem. This is wild prickly lettuce right here. And this is a uh, this is wild millet right here. It's related to millet. It's wild butterfly weed over there. Some milkweed. 
little milkweed. Little milkweed right here, it's got a bunch of freaking aphids. Alright, All right, they're done eating. So shorten their leash to about right there at least. And Rosie, I like to shorten hers all the way. Come on. There you go, that's good enough. Just so that she can't try to step out in front of the ram. She has a habit of trying to cross in front of my ram. Yeah. Good sheep! Yeah! Good sheep! Good sheep! You ready? You ready, Freddy's? Good sheep! Good sheep! Good sheep! We're going to Candlewood Park across the street, uh, number 44. Contacted us and said she had some apples and plums and a peach tree that we could graze from. I got a couple friends in this in this trailer park. They're really nice. They're awesome. Looks like Larita. Hi, my friend Larita just waved down there. Her, her husband Owen are awesome. They helped me put together my my uh, wood stove. Uh, last winter, my mailbox wood stove. They are the ones that, um, that um, help me get a, help me get a. Hi, Larita. There's someone at number 11 that uh, contacted us and said they had a, a pear tree and a, or a apple tree, a peach tree, and uh, and plum trees. And that we should come. in this park but it was at um it was a number 44 you know where number 44 is at oh is the, is uh, is the park like divided in the middle over here yeah there's no way so really? i have to go around yeah, yeah. okay okay interesting so what's that one called over there it's still candlewood park but this is 255 and the next driveway is over uh -huh. Interesting. So, but it's divi it's divided physically, so I have yeah. to go out. Okay. Interesting. All right. Thank you. That that saves me a lot of time walking around. Um, Forty four. Um, I I got a new selfie stick. I'm filming in. Funny. Film filming us back here. I'm not filming you right now. How are you guys? Doing? But I, I did just mention. Oh, there's my friend Lorita Lorita up there, and uh, her and her husband uh, Owen helped me put together the uh, the mailbox wood stove last winter. Mm. And you're storing it at your place. I really appreciate you letting me put that uh, back underneath your porch um, to store since I it's not legal to have fires in the summertime. Not worth carrying. Yeah. How are you? Uh, except for being kind of locked down because of the smoke. But yeah. It, it, that you're sensitive to smoke too. It makes my eyes puffy. You know, I a couple. I had that really bad uh, virus in my eye. No, I didn't know. Did, was it like pink? It's been, it's been be, right before the fire, so it's over a year ago. Uh -huh. This eye is still kind of wonky. Is it like a pink eye virus? It was, uh -huh. but I think there was some damage, and so. Uh, like it, like it went too far before you. Uh, I didn't have any luck with the colloidal silver with her pink eye. She ended up losing her sight over there, um, uh, partially in her right eye, and um, uh, but but then Happy started getting pink eye uh, uh, after that, and I used saline solution, and it worked. Um, and it, worked. it knocked it out, um, oh, and it also uh, it also like I I was putting colloidal silver in my eye when I was giving it to JC just to see like what it felt like because that's what I try to do with my animals is. Uh, <laughs> Uh, to see what they're going through, mm -hmm. and it it was kind of irritative. It was it was like uh, it, it and the the saline solution when I did that it was it, it, it was irritative. It was a little bit more irritative at first than the colloidal silver, but within like five minutes it actually cleared up and it like it felt like it cleaned out my eye. Mm -hmm. and, and then for the whole rest of the day it was like. Uh, and I only did it to one eye so I could like test it. And so I did it to this eye. And this eye for the rest of the day felt like it was like, like able to open wider and easier. And it was brighter eyed, you know, type thing. And, and, uh, and my left eye that I didn't do anything to felt like it had like a small amount of crud like in between the lid and the eyeball that I hadn't even been, no I hadn't even noticed before. Mm. 
So, um, see, yeah, I don't know if uh, if saline. I mean, I think that saline is like the most natural thing. You know, ocean water yeah. um, is like the most natural thing for. Uh, uh, like that's that's the basis of all fermentation is you add uh, enough salt uh, uh, to mimic salt water and then uh, in general like 99.9 percent .9 of of bad bacteria can't stand that saline of an environment uh, but then there's like a whole slew of good bacteria, aerobic bacteria that that love that environment and so they so once they establish themselves then they crowd it out and there's no way that even that 0.1 percent of the bad that can stand the salty will gain a foothold wow well uh yeah it's it's great for noses it's saline is great for to clean out noses i haven't ever tried it for that and that'd be and that'd be nice huh and every other yeah you're right they have the every time that i've ever had a sore throat um my mom always just had me gargle it and it knocked it out yeah it was awesome better than cough syrup Uh -huh, the smoke is yeah. It, ho hopefully, uh, what well, we got like another month before the the rains start and the air starts cleaning up. It's That's what they say. It's crazy that last last year the fire was like what September eighth. It was. So it was exactly a year ago almost right now because what are we on like the second or the third of I'm September? Third, yeah. Yeah. So it was like it's it it's it's it was hard for me to remember how late in the season that was. It was crazy. Yeah. Um, it was ugly and crazy. Yeah, it was. All right, I'll get them off the, the uh, asphalt and get over there. I told her we'd be over there in five minutes. Thank you so much, Larita, for your awesome. All right. Will well, you, uh, tell Owen I said hello. I will. You guys take care. All righty. See you, sister. Yay. And we're not going to eat this grass because they use herbicide. I think you can tell they use herbicide. Um, you can see. You can see, there's no weeds. Hola! Hey man. Hi. Good exercise. Yeah. But yeah, any lawn that's like this, looks like this, that has no weeds, is um, definitely got herbicides on it. Good sheep. That's fine, 44. Hey, puppy. My sheep are hardened your bark. You don't scare them. Forty-four is gonna be all the way down here at the end. Forty-four. Yeah. All right. Good sheep. Yeah. Eat the plums. Eat the plums. Rosie. Eat the plums. Yeah. Good sheep. Good sheep plums. Eat the plums. You guys love your plums? Yeah. Weird. Peaches are so hard. So these apples are. These apples are good. Sweet. Nice apples. Got another peach here. This one's starting to get soft. It's still green though, it's weird. Looks like there's a bunch of peaches back in here. I fell. Hey, you protecting your place. <laughs> it's all right. Good sheep. Good sheep. Those are not dogs. Those are not dogs. And they're not big cats either. Yeah. She didn't know what they are, huh? Bro, I've never seen a sheep before. No. Now, get off this. Yep. All right. If you guys are done with the plums, then let's go. Good sheep. Happy sheep. Yeah. What a happy sheep. All right. 
This alley is the best. This alley right here. We haven't been down this since last year. This lady used to have little chickens. She used to give us eggs. Okay, hold on, stop. I don't want you guys to come off the ground because I want the ones on the ground. So I'm going to, I'm going to carry you to this tree. Eggs. Yeah. Oh yeah. Like I eat that. A bird pecked into this one and knocked it before it fell down. This one a bird pecked. I, the ones that the birds peck into are just as good as any. Oh, these are freaking good. When they're that dirty, you gotta pick all that shit off of them, but they're still good. Still good, still good, still good. All right, I'm gonna put this freaking phone down. Good girl. I don't even think Rosie's ever had a fig. Because the farm she grew up on, unless they had it. Oh, they're ripe. Oh, they're so ripe and so beautiful. Beautiful orange peaches. Hazelnut tree is next. And then the plum tree. Another plum tree. And we got some sweet peas in between. Sweet pea flowers are edible. Pretty tasty. I like their... I like their new shoots. These are what turns into the flowers. I like these the most. Or new growth tips. Where those flower buds come out of. Those are tasty. Way easier to harvest than the actual peas. And no, sweet peas are not poisonous. They just have a lot of phytic acid in them. And phytic acid is like an anti-nutrient. Same anti-nutrient that's concentrated in grains. Look at all the freaking hazelnuts. All right, let me collect some hazelnuts. There's pumps. Look, pumps. Good sheep. Yeah. Oh, happy, happy pissed. She can see everyone else eating. All right, let's go up here so she can eat. She can eat that branch. And you guys can eat these branches. There she goes, she's happy back there now. Good girl, happy. Oh, there's pollen in there. Oh, happy sheep. Got a basket of figs. Got a bunch of peaches. A bunch of hazelnuts. Hazelnuts and sheep filling their bellies full of plums. Around the side of the road. But outside their gate, they're on the gun, so. These people are super cool with us, anyway. So I'm gonna pick up some of these prickly, prickly pears. Prickly pears. <laughs>